everybody! Today I wanted to do a video that was a little bit different. Um, some of you may know that I am a celiac, which means I am allergic to gluten and wheat. Um, gluten and wheat can be found in the usual things that you'd associate them with, like bread and pasta and cakes and biscuits, but it's also in a lot of sneaky things like gravies and soy sauce and tomato ketchup and crisps and stuff, stuff that you wouldn't usually associate with wheaty foods. Um, so this video is just going to be, I'm going to do a quick run through of things that I um, eat, um, gluten free options that I like and that I think are nice. There are a lot of gluten free things out um, these days but some of them aren't very nice and some of them are really nice so I'm just going to talk you through a bit about what I eat. Maybe if some of you are celiac or if some of you are let's say intolerant to wheat or something you might get some tips from this. I am not a nutritionist or in any way educated on this. This is just stuff that I have found from being a celiac and trial and error and stuff. So one of the first things I want to talk about is um, my kind of holy grail product and it's this book and this is the Celiac Society of Ireland food guide, um, food list even, um, and this basically when you sign up with the Celiac Society of Ireland you get sent out this book and you get newsletters and stuff and this book is seriously like so helpful. It just has lists you can see here of all the gluten free um, items and it goes by brand and it's just so helpful. It's really really handy when you first get diagnosed as celiac and you're not sure what you can eat and what you can't eat because sometimes even looking at the back of the pack it might actually tell you whether something is gluten free or not. So this book is really helpful for when you're beginning and then throughout your celiac life as you might say. Um, so yeah I'm sure if you're from the UK or a different country I'm sure there's also an equivalent of this um, like a celiac society so just look that up and I would definitely recommend getting this if you haven't and signing up to them anyway. I'll leave a link to the celiac society of Ireland um, down below. Okay, so I'm going to start off with breakfast, um, the most important meal of the day. No, it really is a really important meal and it's one of the things that when you're celiac you can't eat most of the usual breakfast things and by usual I mean porridge and cereal. Um, both those things are not gluten free. Well, some brands might be but most of them aren't, like for example cornflakes, cocoa pops, all the Kellogg stuff is not gluten free. So that rules out a whole lot of cereals. So I'm just going to tell you what I have for breakfast. and. I have porridge every day for breakfast and I go for this brand. Um, it's called Tilquil Hilly. I don't really know how to say that, but I'll be able to see the brand there. We actually ordered this porridge in and it's really nice. It took a while for us to find a porridge that we all liked. And I'm saying we, I mean my mom and my brother are also celiacs and we all live at home, so that's why we need a lot of porridge. But yeah, so we actually order this and it's really nice and it says here 100 percent pure oat flakes and it's gluten-free, um, of course. And yeah, this is really nice. It tastes just like normal porridge. It is very expensive. We buy it in bulk, but it still works out very expensive. Um, if you want details of where we get this, um, just comment below and I will give you those details. Um, there are also some other porridges that are nice. I, like for one, tried a lot of different types of gluten-free porridge and didn't like them at all and really thought they weren't anything like the, you know, regular porridge. Um, however, this brand is brilliant and there's also a brand in Tesco and I, I can't actually remember the name of it but um, it's kind of like an old style packaging and writing and I think there's like either a picture of an old woman or an old man on the front but it's basically one of the only gluten free porridges you can get in Tesco and yeah look out for that kind of oh there's like an illustration of an old man or woman on it if any of you know can remember the name please comment below or I'll actually once I find out what it is I'll put it in the description box down below but that is also a really nice porridge however it is um, I think like four or five euro per bag like this size so it is very expensive. For cereal then I eat whole earth um, cornflakes these are really similar to normal cornflakes and I think they do them in a maple syrup version as well so it's a bit sweeter and yeah these are just really nice and they're quite cheap you buy them in Dunn stores I think they're two euro 50 or something for a box um, which is pretty good. Um, so these are really nice, I really like these and they're kind of good price for a gluten free option and as I said they do have different varieties of things. This is one I would definitely recommend because it tastes just like normal cornflakes so that's good. Okay moving on to lunch, so for lunch I would usually have a sandwich or something and you know that's another thing when you're celiac you can't eat any bread so that's very annoying. I didn't cut out bread at all, I just opted for gluten free bread. So usually what I eat is, um, my mother is celiac herself and she's kind enough to make us all bread and what she uses for this is this uh, brown bread mix and this is Odlums and it's gluten free brown bread mix and she uses this and the bread turns out really nice. So I make sandwiches with that bread that she's made. This flour it can buy in Tesco, Dunn's, wherever and I think it's pretty reasonably priced and yeah. So that's what we use to make our bread. 
There are loads of gluten-free bread options available now. If I don't have that homemade bread at hand, I would go for the beef-free bread. And this is extremely, extremely popular now, I think. It tastes really, really nice like normal bread. And this is the, the brown seeded loaf version. Um, beef-free do a huge range of different types of gluten-free bread. And like they also do um, wraps as well, which I thought was really good. And yeah, I go for the beef free one if I don't have my homemade bread, as I said. And I also go for Genius. They do a really good brand. They do a really nice white bread that I like as well. But there are loads, but it's a really good option to actually make your own bread if you like making bread and use the gluten-free flour or the gluten-free bread mix. And that's a really good way of, you know, st still being able to bake your own bread just with a gluten-free alternative. And I think it tastes a bit nicer than the ones you buy. As I said, the beef free is really good. Sure, most of you know this if you are celiac, but O'Brien's sandwiches do uh, gluten-free bread and do gluten, O'Brien sandwiches do gluten-free sandwiches and this is the bread they use. With sandwiches then, the fillers are usually gluten-free, so like cheese, meat, um, and stuff like that. Be careful about the pre-bought meat, um, processed meat, because some of that isn't gluten-free. But for most sandwich fillers, it is quite easy. It's just the bread that's the problem. So once you've figured out what bread you like, you're kind of good to go. So moving on to dinner then. Um, as I said, I live at home. My mom is all the celiac, so luckily she just makes kind of what she used to make anyway, with just gluten-free spin on it. So for example, um, she's making lasagna. She would get just these gluten-free uh, lasagna sheets. These are from the Tesco Free From range. The Tesco Free From range, which is really good. It has such a huge variety of pastas and flours and lasagna sheets and all that. So she just use this if she's making lasagna. So yeah, then you can buy this in Tesco. And if she's making like spaghetti bolognese, she'll just use the Tesco Free From spaghetti, um, which tastes identical. I can't taste the difference at all. If you're doing curries and stuff, you just make sure you check your gluten-free food list book that I showed you at the beginning and you can see what curry sauces are gluten-free. And then you have chicken and you have rice, which is gluten-free anyway. So dinner actually is okay. Um, it's kind of just stick with meats and gluten-free um, alternatives, or you could just have potatoes and rice, which are naturally gluten-free anyway. So that's pretty good. I also, <clears throat> I also um, eat, eat a lot of quinoa. Um, some people say quinoa, some people say quinoa. I don't know how to say it, but that's really, really good. Um, and that's naturally gluten-free as well. So that's another alternative if you are not into your pastas and your potatoes and you want to go for something a bit more healthier, the quinoa is a really good gluten-free alternative. So yeah. So I'm gonna move on now to snacks and one of the things I really missed was being able to have cake and biscuits and stuff when I was in people's houses or out in restaurants and cafes. Um, but luckily places are becoming more gluten free and stuff. But one thing I did learn is that you definitely need to bake yourself and like come prepared. Bring a cake in a lunchbox if you're going to a friend's house. It's annoying but it's definitely worth doing. So what I would use if I'm baking would just be gluten free flour. So this is just um, white self raising flour. It's gluten free obviously. And it's from the brand Dove's Farm. And this is just ideal. You can make any sort of dessert you want with this. Just substitute this um, for the normal flour. And like, I don't notice any different. Some people say that it's, they notice a slight difference, but for me, I don't really. Um, so that's just really handy. Like people forget that you can just substitute the flour and you can buy this flour in Tesco and Dunn's and everywhere. And it's not that much more expensive. And it's just a really easy way to make all the things you used to make just with the gluten-free flour. So, Gluten-free flour is a must for any celiac to have in their house and you can bake anything you used to and it's perfect and it works really well. So regarding snacks that I'm not making, that I'm just buying and eating, um, I really like these Kelkin gluten-free uh, tea cakes. They're really nice. I actually prefer them to the normal tea cakes that I used to be able to eat. They're really nice and I've given these to my non-celiac friends and they think they're delicious as well so i'd highly recommend these um you can get these in Dunn stores regarding like um, crisps and stuff i always go for either kettle crisps or the tesco finest range they are all gluten free and they are really nice crisps um so yeah for a healthier snack then i go for crisp bread these are from the they're called the ds gluten free range and you buy these in tesco and these are really nice they're just like those um light kind of crackers um and you can put hummus on them you can put cream cheese on them or whatever and they're really nice and they're they're really well priced as well and just a really handy thing if you're used to eating crackers or whatever these are really good alternative most rice cakes and stuff are naturally gluten free as well just check the, the packet but they're also really handy to have with hummus or whatever on them um, as a snack tesco and dunn stores and all major shops are actually doing really nice gluten free biscuits at the moment i've none to show you now because i've eaten all mine but um they do like jammy dodgers um style gluten free biscuits and they do um digestives and shortbread I actually just tried um super value had to have a gluten free range and i tried their ginger biscuits and they're really nice as well um so definitely check out their 
super value gluten free section as well because I only realised that recently. So that's the round of all the gluten free items that I really like and I hope this helped some people. Whether you're celiac or like just intolerant to wheat, I hope this has helped some people in some way. And if you'd like more videos on this topic, um, like gluten free cooking and eating out in Dublin, um, gluten free or whatever, uh, comment below. Let me know. I'd love to know if people are interested in that. And I would definitely be up for making more videos. Maybe I could film a video cooking in the kitchen, gluten free, although I'm not a great cook. So I don't know if I really want to put my cooking skills on the internet. Please subscribe if you want to see more videos from me. Give this video a huge thumbs up if you're a celiac and you are fine. <laughs> and yeah, thanks for watching guys. Bye!